joy and honor again to be uh, with you. Um, today we are going to take some time to reflect on the subject of ministry. Uh, uh, last week we had uh, the opportunity to share with you on the subject of faith, but I um, want to focus on this very important subject of ministry. <clears throat> Every believer has a role and a part to play in the body of Christ. Every believer is a minister according to the word of God. And God would want that every believer functions effectively as a minister. Ministry is faithful service to God. It is ministering to people by... It's ministering to God through ministering to people. Ministry is important for every believer and that every believer needs to find their place in ministry. The scripture says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, reading from verse 12, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Uh, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and uh, carried about by every wind of doctrine, uh, by the trickery of men's cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, who from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself. And verse 12 says, uh, starting at verse 11, that he himself gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets, some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teachers. And it says, for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So God put certain ministers, leadership giftings in the body, that all members of the body of Christ may be equipped for the work of ministry. So that means that every believer is and is expected to be a minister. So ministry here then is not just what we do in the four, as we would say, in the four corners of the church, but it is what every believer does as a contribution to the well-being of the kingdom of God. If one is a doctor or a lawyer, if one is a business person, wherever we are placed, every believer is a minister in that place and they ought to minister and serve God in their vocation or in the area of their gifting. Now, a few other um, pictures, so to say, have been given. For example, that every believer is a priest. Every believer is a priest. And so there is a universal priesthood of the believer. Not only the pastors or the prophets or the pastors or the teachers, are priests, but every believer is a priest, just like every believer is a soldier. We are soldiers of the cross. Amen. And all believers are ambassadors. We all are representatives of the kingdom of God. So in the same vein, all believers are ministers. We all are ministers and here to serve God. Every believer must engage in the work of ministry. And when we do, this builds up the body of Christ. This builds up the body of Christ. And um, as, we, as each believer ministers in the area of their influence, they engage in furthering the influence of the kingdom of God. Now traditionally, a ministry would be what is done in church and what uh, which you be done by say the priests, the prophets, the apostles, the evangelists, the pastors, teachers, elders and deacons. But I'm saying that all of us, every believer, my encouragement to you today, understand that as a child of God, you are a minister. Now three fundamental areas of our ministry. First of all, that we minister upward, that is ministry to God. 
and that is worship. Every believer must engage in worship. Ministry to God. Number two, ministry to the body or horizontal ministry. Ministry to other members of the body of Christ. That is edifying one another. Ministering to others. Encouraging, admonishing, uh, building up one another so that we all can be strong in the Lord. And thirdly, ministry to the world. So every believer is to engage in ministry to God ministry to other believers and thirdly ministry to the world evangelism evangelizing reaching out spreading the influence of the kingdom of god book of matthew chapter 5 declares from verse 13 uh, actually verse 16 states that you now let your light so shine that men may uh, see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven so we are to move out and be an influence to the world. But the body of Christ, as I've stated, is a minister and represents the kingdom of God. And so now for every believer, it is Christ and his purpose, Christ and his calling that must reign in us. Galatians 2.20 declares that I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So that means that for every child of God who now understands that they are ministers, they ought to know that it is Christ. It is his purpose. It is his plan. It is his will that we are here to accomplish. The life we now live in the, in the flesh, we live by faith, we live in obedience, we live in submission to the will of him who loved us and who called us and who gave himself for us. Ministry, uh, the minister is also the word minister, is the word, uh, uh, the word minister is the same word for steward or servant. So the minister is a person who does not um, is a person who is not his own master. Uh, as ministers of God, as ministers of Christ, we are not our own masters. We are the servants of God. So we live to minister. We live to do His will. We minister as the servants of God. That means we, d we are dethroned as individuals and He, our master, is enthroned. That means His will, His purpose and His plan is what we are here to accomplish. So my encouragement to you today is understand your place as a minister. Understand your place as a minister. Now, ministry means therefore um, that we serve God and meet the needs of others. The minister is or ministry is about stewardship. It's about accomplishing the will of the master. Uh, I'd encourage you to spend some time to read Matthew chapter 25 and read through the parable of the talents, as it's called, uh, from verse 14 to verse 30. And the beautiful things we learn there about <coughs> our place as ministers, or yes, as ministers. But allow me to just mention that ministry is about faithful service to God faithful service to God, faithful service to his people, faithful service to the world. Ministry is about service and not position. Ministry is about doing the will of our master. Now, serving necessitates the right attitude, the right mindset, the right motivation, uh, every minister must have the right positioning from which they minister. We must be careful to minister not according to our own will, but according to his will. So serving as a minister, how can one serve effectively as a minister? We serve effectively as ministers by, by and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't serve according to our own strength or ability. Every minister must understand that we serve by and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 6, verse 1 through to verse uh, 3 shows us that when they, um, uh, when they looked for those uh, who would minister in serving tables, they looked for those who 
um, and they look for those who uh, were full of the Holy Spirit and full of wisdom. So serving as a minister necessitates serving in and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the minister must also not be driven by dishonest gain. The minister must be driven by the need and the desire to please God. We must serve God from a true and a pure heart. Our motivation and our attitudes must be right. We must not be driven by the desire for material gain or fame or reputation or position, but rather to do the will of the master. Every minister must understand that they must be faithful. The scripture says in First Corinthians chapter 4, reading from uh, particularly verse 2, it says it is requirements and it's required that a minister be found faithful. Every minister must be faithful. Every minister must be diligent, must function in integrity and humility. In the kingdom of God, the way up is the way down, in humility and in integrity. Every minister must serve for the glory and honor of our master, and the Lord, that's the Lord Jesus. Ministry will necessitate endurance. It is a challenge. So every minister must endure. What of God says in the book of Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, that we should endure hardness as good soldiers. Endure hardness. So ministry necessitates endurance. But also, the minister must serve with joy, wholeheartedly not grudgingly. When we serve in church, when we serve in our workplaces, we should not function as though we are compelled or harassed to do what we do. We must serve joyfully. We must serve wholeheartedly, not grudgingly. True servants realize that the source of joy is in serving God and serving others. But allow me to bring this to a close by stating as well that true ministers serve with the sole purpose and desire to please their commanding officer. Our Lord Jesus Christ is our head, is our master, is the head of the church. And so we must serve to please him, to honor him, to glorify him. Ministers must be modest. Ministers must be unselfish, self-denying, sacrificing, and giving. Every man, servant of God, must be given. We must be sacrificial. Every minister must be available, must be sensitive, must be caring, and must be supportive. Every minister also must be dedicated, must be disciplined, self-disciplined, must be diligent, and must be faithful. I encourage you to understand that as a member of the body of Christ, you have a part to play. If you're in church ministry, you ought to serve to the best of your ability. If you are in the marketplace, serve God in a way that his kingdom is shined, that people are able to see that you are governed by a set of values that um, make you distinct, make you different. We can see examples of people who served in the marketplace. We know Joseph was a servant of God, but he served as a governor, he served as a leader. We see Daniel as a governor, as a leader within Babylon, but he too was a servant of God. Uh, so the servants of God are not only those who are in the setting of, of the church, but also in the marketplace. So my encouragement to you is in order to be an effective minister, understand that you have a master and it is him that you must please. It is him that you must honor. Your life should be lived to honor him and to glorify him. I want to encourage you uh, to seek to be the best you can be as a minister of the Lord. Amen. Now, you can find uh, more of these messages by going to our Facebook page, uh, which is Blessed Christian Church, um, Mukono, that's on Facebook, and also you can get these messages on our YouTube channel, channel which is BCC Mukono. The Lord bless you, in Jesus' name.